Hi everybody, I'm Rick Hansen, and this is the Foundations of Wellbeing program focused on the learning pillar. And with me today is the distinguished professor, Barbara Fredrickson, who is a legendary figure in positive psychology, someone who I began reading probably 20 years ago and have followed closely uh, as someone who's really moved the field forward of positive human emotion and flourishing at least as much as anyone and certainly more than most. So she's a professor of psychology at the uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill where she directs the PEP lab uh, and you can learn more about her lab at positiveemotions.org and you can also see more about her including a ton of really great resources at positivityresonance.com. She's presented her work uh, both to the uh, U.S. White House and to the Dalai Lama. So, Barb Fredrickson, uh, it's really an honor and a, truly a pleasure and a privilege to be talking with you today from your office there at the University of North Carolina. So, thanks for doing this. Yeah, it's great to be here, Rick. I'm glad you're putting this all together for, for all of us. You're a leading authority, perhaps arguably the world's leading authority, on positive emotions, particularly uh, their uh, emergence through evolutionary processes and their, their functions and benefits today. As we get into this topic, why don't we start first with that word emotion. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us the short 411 if you could please here. What is an emotion? Well, an emotion is a momentary mind and body state that um, orients us to what's uh, most important in the situation and how to best deal deal with it. Mm -hmm. So um, emotions are brief. They last, you know, seconds and minutes, not weeks and months. And they're really about, you know, how are the current circumstances that you're in? How do they impinge on your um, well-being, you know, are they good for you or bad for you? And emotions kind of quickly bring to consciousness whether, you know, something something is good for you or bad for you in that context and, um, uh, you know, set us up to respond in a way that um, uh, is going to be beneficial for our survival. Um, that's that's uh, I, the logic of how humans have evolved to have these um, uh, kind of alert systems, you know, an emotion kind of takes over consciousness and um, uh, brings with it some ideas about what to do next, action urges, and those action urges um, historically um, over millennium have been the ones that helped our ancestors um, get out of difficult situations, um, any threats to life and limb, and take best advantage of um, newfound opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the um, the negative and the positive of emotions, right there. Right. So um, you know, just hearing you there raises the natural question. Yeah. If emotions are fleeting, uh, and people can have positive or negative or neutral ones, and we'll come to that in a moment. But what about moods? Can a person yeah. have a background emotional yeah. inclination or? Or Definitely. tenor, you know. Sometimes people yeah. talk about it as hedonic tone, ranging right. from pleasant to neutral to unpleasant. Exactly. Um, can someone have a p affectively positive mood? Definitely. Um, I think of um, moods and then also affective traits as setting the thresholds for the experiences of emotions. This comes right out of Erica Rosenberg wrote a really nice paper. Um, some years ago on the relationship between affective traits, moods, and emotions. Mm -hmm. And emotions really occupy the foreground of consciousness. Moods kind of operate in the background. Mm -hmm. And um, emotions, too, have an object. They're about something. You know, you're angry at an offense or you're delighted about the, you know, great weather. And m moods are untethered from circumstances. They really... You know, you're just feeling irritable, you don't know why, or you're just feeling lighthearted and you don't know why. They don't really have a, an object or a, or a because or a reason. Um, and, uh, you know, some have argued that moods are in a way maybe the long-term residue of an emotion, or, um, but they also set our propensities to experience 
um, a, a similar valence or you know similar state emotion. So being irritable all the time does make anger come more quickly. Mm. Being um, kind of cheerful, happy-go-lucky, open all the time makes it easier to experience positive emotions. So those those moods and and affective traits are really consequential. Just to kind of flag some terms we'll be using. Uh, first, I'm tracking that you're distinguishing among three things, emotions, moods, and affective traits. Right. right? Could you describe what you mean by affective trait kind of simply and briefly? Distinct from mood. Yeah. Um, an affective trait would be something more like um, uh, neuroticism or extroversion or, mm -hmm. you know, personality traits yeah. that are viewed as um, uh, largely stable and um, uh, uh, affecting people in many situations over time. Yeah. Um, that are emotionally consequential. Yes, that are right. You could think of traits that are much more like around cognitive processing style, things right. like that. They wouldn't be so emotionally consequential. Exactly. Yeah. So a conscientiousness, that doesn't have a lot of emotional tone to it. But neuroticism does. Yeah. And extroversion does. Yeah. Um, but, um, and so does openness to experience. That right. has sort of a, uh, a more, you know, uh, take in the good of the world. So to the broaden and build theory. Uh, right. What do you mean, uh, if you could please, about how positive emotions tend tend to broaden our perspective, our thinking, our sense right. of the possible right. the options in front of us? And then, how does that broadening, or maybe other pathways, lead to the way uh, lead to building resources inside right. a person right. uh, that uh, they can draw upon for their own welfare as well as the benefit of others? Hey. You said it really well. <laughs> well, I've read um, your work really well. So I think the key thing to keep in mind is that um, the broaden and build theory describes both the form and the function of positive emotions. And so the form of positive emotions is that when we experience them, our, our minds really open up. And this is something that, you know, we've been able to show with um, behavioral measures. Other people have shown with eye tracking measures. Still others have shown with brain imaging measures that um, when we move from feeling neutral to feeling positive, we literally um, see more. We, our peripheral vision expands. Mm -hmm. We're able to connect the dots of disparate ideas. It's, it's kind of like we're able to, see, we're more likely to see the whole. Um, or more of the whole, let's put it that way. We, you know, obviously we're not always seeing the whole, <laughs> but we're, our, our appreciation of the world around us becomes more expansive. And that's a temporary effect. That, that widening of awareness is something that um, really is co-present in our consciousness as we're experiencing positive states. And so th uh, the broaden effect of positive emotion is as transient as our emotions. The consequence of that broadened mindset is the discovering or learning that occurs um, in those um, more wide open um, uh, mind states. And that um, is the build effect. And that's the function of positive emotions. It, it, it is happening on a very different time scale then is the broadening. Broadening is momentary. It's and it's you know when the positive emotion is gone, the broadened awareness is gone. But having more of those you know open moments allows people to discover and build um, inner resources that um, are durable, that do outlast the emotion. Um, so it's it's nature's way of of assuring that we will grow and change and learn even without trying. Because, um, I mean, this isn't, I don't want to be confused, it's not the only way to learn. People can learn by studying, by going through traditional education systems, whatever. Learn, not all learning is fun. But when people are having enjoyment and positive emotions, there is implicit learning and growth being fueled in those moments. And um, so the broaden effect is something that really happens over time with the accumulation and compounding of, of more moments of, of uh, positivity or positive emotions. What I find really useful is to 
um, think of positive emotional states, these moments, as nutrients, hmm. you know, where um, we know we need to eat fruits and vegetables um, frequently, and we don't just you know, eat one piece of broccoli and then all of a sudden everything's fine in terms of our health. <laughs> it's, it's a steady diet. So we need to be thinking of, a, of having a, a steady emotional diet yeah. of positivity because those moments nourish growth yeah. and nourish learning. So, yeah. Barb Fredrickson, uh, thank you really so much for myself and from everybody watching uh, you here and listening to you here in this video. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right.